All right, shalom, 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 peace, welcome, uh, brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel, so-called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics. This is another message of the, uh, of the uh, covenant class regarding witchcraft. What better time than to talk about it right now, man? Everybody's got to be aware of the elements of witchcraft, man. Some people may be practicing unawares, may not even be cognizant of certain things and, and elements that, you know, go on in our daily lives or motivated by Satan motivated by uh, divinations from the so-called white man and these nations. Um, you know, that's why they prey on a particular spirit in the time of the year where they want to conjure up, you know, a lot of these particular demons, man. I mean, look, all hell is breaking loose all throughout the earth. You got wars jumping off, rumors of wars, plagues, pestilences, everything that we, you know, discuss all the time in DSTM is going on full flare in the world. And the only thing that our people, um, want to do is teach our people and teach their kids how to trick or treat. All they want to do is go out here and dress up and play um, in fantasy worlds and go into parties and drinking and reveling and getting all caught up uh, doing drugs and who knows what at these particular parties, man. Uh, going off, conjuring up spirits, messing with Ouija boards and you know, going into all different types of elements on the dark web, trying to scare themselves, going to haunted houses, going over here to um, you know theme parks that are all built around uh, Halloween themes, spending their money, going broke over this thing. And I realize it, man, these are all idolatrous, wicked, paganistic customs and practices, man, that we have no business dealing with. I'm not going to talk too much about Halloween, man. Most of our people should know by now. If you're tuning into this channel, man, and you're still um, observing Halloween, you need to repent. You need to repent. That's not an Israelite custom. That's not found anywhere in the Bible outside of it being wicked, right? Uh, it's dating back to Europe and the Celts. Um, it has nothing to do with us. I might talk about it, touch on it just a little bit here or there as we go on through the lesson, man, but it's not going to be about the wickedness of Halloween. You can find uh, <clears throat> um, a multitude of information and classes and, and on that particular topic online all day long. Uh, I think we may even have a lesson that was done, you know, in times past to be archive our YouTube channel. But nonetheless, this today's topic, man, we're going to talk about witchcraft. Right. Um, one thing I want to lay a foundation on is knowing that if the earth's been given into the hands of the white man or the, the wicked, as the scriptures say, let me be clear. Job 9, 24 says the earth's been given into the hands of the wicked. Right. Now, the Bible says that those who control the earth. The power of controlling the earth was given by Satan. Let's get that real quick in Revelation. Revelation. Uh, Revelation 13. Let me share my screen. That'd be nice, right? Revelation 13. We're going to go through this real quick. Revelation 13 and 2 it says, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. So we're talking about this fourth beast, the beast of the so-called white man uh, developed from the Roman Empire, which then translated itself into America. Right. It says it was like unto a leopard. Why is it like unto a leopard uh, dating back to 333 B.C. Uh, with Alexander the Freak when he came into power? You can read that in the first chapter of Maccabees came into power. He was still young in his early 20s, was able to conquer all the nations, all the world. All the known world, man, had him in subjection, right? He's like unto a leopard, man. If you look at the, the, the food chain of the big cats in the jungles, the leopard, I think, is like number three, right? We know the lion is the king of the jungle, right? But the leopard in itself is a cold predator, man. He goes in the water to get his prey. He's climbing up trees. He's tracking, them, tracking down uh, gazelles, antelopes, or whatnot. I've seen leopards jump into uh jump into the water into the realms of where the caiman and the crocodiles are at fight bite down on that neck man carry that dang uh caiman and crocodile out of the out of the water and go have a nice little feast man they fear nothing they fear nothing seen them uh you know take down antelopes and whatnot man and carry them up whole trees so just looking at the metaphorical uh, uh, nature of the the, um, the leopard, 
the power, the swiftness, man, the, the ability to go from land to sea, the hunters pray down, man. That's that's elements that the so-called white man has, right? And it says, in his feet were as the feet of a bear. When it comes down to him conquering, he was able to stomp out and um, impose his will on all nations with the power and the might of a bear, like a bully, you know? Ask Japan if they got bullied. Remember that? The Hiroshima, Nagasaki, man. Uh, ask them if they got bullied, man. And wonder why no other nation has dared to come over here and try to invade, bomb, or do anything to America. Don't talk to them. Don't talk about 9-11. Don't go there. Because uh, you, you, you heard the phrase, man. It was an inside job. You heard that? Okay. Uh, anyway, so we know that it has the feet of a bear. Why? Because of the power of the might and its ability to stomp out any and all competition, man, from the Persians and the Medes all the way up to, you know, the, the nations in Africa, Egypt, so forth and so on, man. They completely took over everything, man. Bullied their way in with the power and the might of a bear, it says, in his mouth as the mouth of a lion. So what does he do? He speaks great things against the Most High. He says he is the Most High, uh, utilizing his mouth as a lion, right? Um, let me open up another tab. And let's look at this real quick. Oh, no, that's some Proverbs. Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28, 15. It says, as a roaring lion and a ranging bear, so is a wicked ruler over the poor people. Well, look at how the so-called white man rules. It says, as a roaring lion and a ranging bear, so is a wicked ruler over the poor people. Just look at the example of the Israelis right now fighting against the Palestinians. I just covered a quote in, in a story, man. Um, uh, one of the, um, a man in Gaza, he was talking about that people are close to killing each other for food right now because why? The Israelis cut off all supplies, food, water, um, electricity. They've limited and even cut off internet access so people can't communicate. You can't talk. You can't look up and see what's going on currently in your in your particular environments. Um, you can't communicate. You cut off food supplies. But they said, man, a wicked ruler is going to do that to poor people, man. Look how the so-called white man uh, just I, I just covered another story um, this past DSTM about them cleaning up San Francisco for the Asian Pacific Economic uh, Conference or something like I forget, APEC. But when it comes down to talking about economics and, and, and money and, and control and power and all of that, they can clean up San Francisco. But otherwise, they'll leave the people out on the streets, man. Rampant drug use, uh, tent cities everywhere, crime is up like crazy, man, carjackings, you name it. They were even telling the people, man, um, the uh, people working in the corporate offices and all of that, they said, man, when you go to work, you can, you can, you can wear a bulletproof vest and you can hire armored guards. But what about the poor people, man, that's around there? Do, is anybody going to protect them? Is anybody, you know, the people that lost their jobs, the people that have been uh, victimized out here on, on these streets, man, because of that uh, economy? No, no, they're, they're, they're going to be subject to have to fend for themselves, right? Look at this also. Now, also, as a mouth with a lion, what's he doing? He's going to roar and speak great blasphemies. Remember this, know this guy, George Soros? This is an L.A. Times article from 2004. 2004. You ever seen George Soros? I'm sure you all have. If you have a man, let, let's look at this demon right real quick. This guy is a, uh, he's at the GMO persuasion. He's at the GMO persuasion, right? He's a billionaire man that utilizes and throws around his money to influence wars, uh, societal breakdowns. I mean, he, he's the one who's behind funding Black Lives Matter. An open society, which is another foundation that he utilizes to infiltrate communities. Black Lives Matter, right? Now, that was supposed to be about helping the black cause, man, fighting against injustices and, uh, you know, po police brutality and all that. Wasn't that supposed to be the case? Oh, but when you really look at the original uh, mission statement from them, it said that they were there to destroy the nuclear family. Uh, they wanted to promote the LGBTQ plus HIV, you know, movements. So it really wasn't about black lives, man. He wanted to promote more abominations, more division, and more destruction in our communities. This guy, man, sold out his own people during the time of the H cost, 
Can't say the whole word. You know, the algorithms be creeping. But you know what I'm talking about. He delivered his own people up. Sold them out. Right. But look at what it says. George Soros, the God who carries around some dangerous demons. Dangerous demons. I didn't say that. That was L.A. Times article. They said that, right? Now, let's drop on down. We'll just read, you know. He's a, let's look at this real quick, right? Uh, frankly, I don't think I need to do a lot more. Democratic philanthropist uh, George Soros bragged to USA Today just a few months ago. I now take the defeat of Bush more or less for granted. So, you know, he funds politicians. He tries to get uh, uh, political influence through his money, you know. But the main thing I want to read is down here. Look at this. It says, it seems that Soros believes he was anointed by God. I fancy myself as some kind of God, he once wrote. If truth be known, I carried some rather potent messianic fantasies with me from childhood, which I felt I had to control. Otherwise, they might get me in trouble. Did, did you hear that? If truth be known, I carry some rather potent messianic fantasies with me from childhood, which I felt I had to control. Otherwise, they might get me in trouble. Continuing on, it says, when asked by Britain's independent newspaper to elaborate on that passage, Sorrow said, it is a sort of disease when you consider yourself some kind of God. So look at that. A disease, meaning what? He's got demons on him. To think that he is the most high. Well, isn't that what they said in, in Isaiah 11? And I ain't just talking about him in particular, where it says, I will be like the most high, I will send to, into the heights of the heavens, set his nest into the heavens. He wants to be like the most high. That's many of the elitist so called white men. The white man has a God complex. That's a disease. These are demons that's on them, right? It says, It is sort of a disease when you consider yourself some kind of God, the creator of everything. But I feel comfortable about it now since I began to live it out. So he says he's living out being a God. This guy is still walking around. With money in his pockets, influencing politicians, influencing laws, influencing uh, cultures. Right. Influencing wars. And he says he's comfortable now with these demons on him. Because now he's living it out. So going back over here to Revelation, it says that uh, he has the mouth of a lion. So that's the type of mouth that is being spoken of. Speaking great words and blasphemies, man, believing that he is the most high. That's just one example of the so-called white man doing that. Right. And it says, continuing on, it says, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Well, who is the dragon? We should know by now. The dragon, verse 9 of Revelation, the 12th chapter. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So it says that the devil and Satan is the one that gave this beast its power, seat, and great authority. So what does that mean? How were they able to? Obtain power. How are they able to obtain power? Let's look at Luke, the fourth chapter. And this is after Yahweh Shai came out for his 40 day fast, came to be tempted of Satan. We're going to read verse five and six. It says, And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. So Satan clearly told Yahweh Shai, he said, look, all the powers in the kingdoms of the world, man, it's in my hands, i.e. the earth being given into the hands of the wicked. I've got control of all the earth. You can have dominion, power, authority, seats of authority, rulership over all the world, man. All you got to do is do what? Verse seven. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. You want great power? You want seats of authority? You want to be able to uh, be one of the beasts that control and operate the world under my authority? Under my power, all you got to do is worship me. That's what he told Yahweh Shai. What did Yahweh Shai say? And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy power, and him only shalt thou serve. Well, remember, 
Yahweh Shah said, we're only supposed to worship the Most High Yahweh, and him only shall we serve. George Soros said he felt like he was anointed by God. Well, what God? He's talking about Satan. He felt like he was anointed from Satan, that he could become a God, and now he's living it out. Okay? He's living it out. Hold on one second, y'all. Shalaki. It's lucky, y'all. Uh, it's lucky. <clears throat> but uh, let's get back real, real quick. Verse 8 again. It says, And Yahweh shall answer and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy power, and him only shalt thou serve. So we're only supposed to call and serve to the Most High Yahweh. Uh, the so called white man says, under George Soros, says that he felt like he has a messianic calling, you know, that the, he, he's been anointed by God. To become a god and creator he's more comfortable now that he's living it out well who did he bow down and worship he had to worship satan man that's the god that he worships that's who he's involving himself with right so getting back over here to revelation 13 verse 2 one more time and the beast which i saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the, as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority so i go there to say that the seat, the great authority, the power that is ruling this earth right now is under Satan's authority, i.e. the USA. You know, that's an old acronym under Satan's authority. Right. But who wields the power? The so-called white man. He's the one that's sitting out here um, acknowledging and putting himself in a position to be a ruler and a dominant over the earth. He believes that he is a God. But who's he get his power from? From Satan. So everything he puts out there from technologies to ideologies, paganism, paganistic customs, all these folly days that he promotes, you know, um, all these religious cults that he got out there, man. This is all motivated by Satan. The elements of uh, uh, paganism that he, you know, inserts, man, the hidden symbolisms. This is all done by Satan. We see who his daddy is, right? So when we're, we're seeing these things, let's look at this article real quick, too. Now, he's in control, right? Practical magic, the lucrative business of being a witch on Etsy and TikTok. Now, these are things that are being utilized by a billion people. TikTok alone, man. Yeah, TikTok was created by the Chinese, but the Chinese may utilize it and make it for the so-called white man. The Chinese don't even be on TikTok over there in China. They got all kind of internet bans and stuff that you can't do over there. They make them things, man, so the so-called white man can utilize it as a tool to, uh, to distract distort, share information, share in this information, you know, entertainment, all this other stuff, right? So TikTok has over a billion users. Now it's being utilized as a method to funnel and promote witchcraft. Etsy, people that are selling their services, you know, uh, private sellers, now are on Etsy and they're utilizing it to promote witchcraft. Look at this. When Maria Khan's boyfriend left her last year, she was desperate to win him back. I knew she was I knew he was seeing someone else, but I didn't know how serious it was, said Miss Khan, an influencer in Toronto. Well, notice how everybody's an influencer now. The internet now has been utilized as a tool to influence thoughts, to influence cultures, to influence, you know, people. You got people on there, man, that they're, they're financial influencers. People know and all of a sudden everybody knows what to do with your money. Oh, I'm a relationship expert. Oh, I'm a self, I'm a motivational speaker. I'm a self-help coach. I'm this, that, and the third. I mean, you got people sitting in their cars talking about how they're, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
you know, some motivational speaker. I mean, well, why the hell are you not sitting out in, in, in crowds of thousands? You know, like what, what's the name? Tony Robbins used to do. These guys sitting in their cars, man, telling you about your relationships and what you should and shouldn't be doing. See, everybody got a voice, man. Everybody don't need to be hurt. All right. But here she is, an influencer of an, in Toronto. She just wanted her gone. I kind of just wanted her gone. Speaking about her, her ex-boyfriend's new, new love or whatever. Look at this. At a loss, she decided to consult the occult. We'll talk about that in a minute. The first spell I bought was a cord cutting spell, which for me was about removing a third party. Ms. Khan 28 says she found a witch through TikTok. Oh, look at that. How convenient. Who only required the former couple's name to perform a candle ritual, tying a length of twine around two candles, letting the wigs burn down until the string is broken by the flames. She said that it went well, Miss Khan. So she goes on TikTok, man. You know, the old days of, uh, you remember, uh, if some of y'all don't remember this, man, but if you do, you remember Dion Warlock or ooh, Dion Warwick, the famed R&B singer. Uh, she used to promote psychic hotlines. Some of y'all remember Miss Cleo, you know, uh, Aladada made mention of California psychics a couple of weeks ago in this class about recognizing the spirits. California psychics, man, people are calling in still, want somebody to tell their fortunes. I mean, look at this. It says it's a good time to be a witch. What better time now, man? We're under Satan's it's authority, man. All, all, all uh, anything goes. You know, the so-called white man says, hey, do what you want to do. Want to be a witch? Fine, I'm with that. That that gives him even more power. You know, utilizing divination, man. You know, you got to even look at it from a perspective of uh, with, with technology. You know, you've got what they've got known as uh, familiar spirits, right? And the scriptures let us know not to not to consult one who has a familiar spirit. That's like the witch of Endor that um, Saul went to go seek when she went when he needed her to conjure up Samuel's spirit. Somebody said they got familiar spirits. They like psychic mediums, man. They, they become the intermediary between you and somebody you're familiar with, somebody that you want to talk to again. Well, look, look how they do that, man, when you're dealing with this particular technology with algorithms and the cookies and uh, AI bots, you know. And that's a whole other thing, man. Artificial intelligence. You know, they're trying to emulate the most high. The most high is the ultimate intelligence, man, the divine intelligence and the creator of all. You got to imagine, you got to have some sort of divine intelligence when you making a creation where you know you have a whole creation meaning the earth right and it's all built to sustain another creation with humans from vegetation water to air everything that we need our bodies are even made up of elements of the, of the earth right it's all compatible that can't happen from just a big bang you know this had to be intelligently designed in order to make it happen to put the, uh, the 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 uh, the breath of life into man, speaking about Adam, which is translated down into the you know the Adamites and, and then eventually into the children of Israel, to receive the wisdom of the Most High, the knowledge and the understanding of how to subdue the earth, you know, putting things under control, man, establishing kingdoms and rulerships over the earth, man. Look at Solomon, forty years of peace. All he needed was the wisdom of the Most High to put that intelligence into his people. You know, yeah, you, you got to have an, an intelligent source, man, to, to draw from. White man knows this, goes out there and promotes a whole a doctrine about uh, a Big Bang theory and atheism. But meanwhile, secretly, he believes and he knows. And he says, only thing I can do is create an artificial form of that. An artificial intelligence. So when you see these algorithms, man, that are trying to pre-program and self, you know, pre uh, uh pre-predict what, what, you know, what they think you want to see or hear or watch. That's kind of like a familiar spirit, man. They're trying to tell you, I, I know what you want. Just just type in a little keyword, man. I'm going to give you everything that you need. Are you familiar with these? You know, that's part of the, the technology. Man. I know we're all trapped in it, but you just got to be mindful of what's going on. You got to be mindful of what, where and how these things are sourced from. See, it's a good time to be a witch. Those stepped in the craft are part of a $2.3 billion industry in the largest psychic services universe. $2.3 billion, man, people are spending on psychics and psychic hotlines and all that other foolishness. A universe that includes palm reading, tarot cards, and astrology. 
People aren't dialing psychics from the phone book or knocking on witchy storefronts and back rooms for their fortune anymore. Supernatural entrepreneurs have set up shop on TikTok and Etsy. There are nearly 36,000 Etsy sellers offering psychic readings and related paraphernalia like enchanted candles, apothecary kits, ritual oils, and voodoo dolls, all elements of paganism um, and idolatry. 36,000 people on there selling it, enchanted candles. You know, the Catholics is big on burning candles and all that other stuff, man. Apothecary kits. I mean, look at all of this. Ritual oil, voodoo dolls. Unbelievable. And they said it's a good time to be a witch, man. You want a side hustle? You know, you're out, you're out here struggling. Out here struggling, you know, because of the economy. You know, that's why people out here protesting and picking it right now, because they're sitting up and saying, man, I, what I'm making, I can't survive off of that. You keep raising the prices. My wages is going down. Well, best thing to do is get a side hustle. Now, you, now you're out here promoting, telling people, man, hey, there's billions of dollars in witchcraft. You, you, you're an influencer already online. You already got a following. Why not say, you know what? I actually can do this, too. Then you start tapping into all kind of elements of the, of the left hand sides of knowledge and wickedness. Become a little charlatan out there, man, deceiving people, lying. It gets your people all destroyed and yourself and, and included. Look at verse uh, Isaiah 47, 9. It says, but these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day. <clears throat> and it's speaking about Babylon and, and the so-called white man in particular. It says, shall come into a moment in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection. For the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. See, that's how he's maintaining his power, man, and the deceit, deceitfulness of his wickedness. The multitude of his sorceries, right? America's going to be destroyed because of this. The multitude of his sorceries, utilizing enchantments, man. Continue on, says, for thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none see of me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge that I perverted thee. This is the witchcraft that he utilizes, wisdom and knowledge. Elements of the occult, seduction, you know, technologies. These are all the things that he rests, rests his, his laurels on. It's perverted. And that was said in my heart, I am and none else besides me. See, that's that God complex. But what's he trusting? Sorceries, enchantments, his left hand side, wisdom and knowledge. And he believes that there's nothing else but him because he trusts in, <clears throat> in Satan. And he trusts in his uh, his God. Continue on. It says, therefore, shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall, fall upon thee. See, America's going to be judged because of all of the mischiefs and the sorceries and the wickedness that, that, that's, that's involved in. He said, you ain't going to know where it's going to come from, right? Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. So America has a known complete desolation and destruction. See, when the missiles get to flying, man, and them chariots get to flying and roaring and finishing off this place, man, with fervent heat and destruction, it's going to know a destruction in, in, a, in, a, in a case of, uh, of desolation is never known before. Verse 12, it says, stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so, be thou shalt be able to profit. If so, be thou mayest prevail. The most awesome man will go ahead and try to use your, your sorceries. Don't try to use your enchantments to, st to stop the judgment of the Lord, man. Good luck. That ain't going to happen. Right? Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers and the stargazers, the monthly progn prognosticators, stand up and save thee from these things which shall come upon thee. You know, go go wait, wait for all these little witches on, on Etsy and TikTok. See if they can save the judgment of America. See if they can stop their own judgment. That ain't going to be able to happen, man. Anton LaVey and, and all them, uh, you know, Alistair Crowley and all the followers of them, man. See, see if they're able to stop you, man. The, the Church of Satan, man, the Baphomet statues that you got lined up. See if that's able to stop the, the, the wrath of the Lord. Verse 14, behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at nor fire to sit before it. See that? That's ultimately going to be the judgment of, of, of the uh, of America, the so-called white man, and all those that are involving themselves in the elements of witchcraft. Okay, so oh man, I wasn't sharing. 
Shalaka, y'all. I was supposed to be sharing that. So hopefully y'all got the y'all got the scriptures. Isaiah 47, 11 down. And I did read from this particular article. Shalakia, man. I thought I was sharing. Uh this is the article here talking about practical magic, the lucrative business of being a witch on Etsy and on TikTok. You know, this is the one I was just reading about. You can see here, it's talking about it's a good time to be a witch. $2.3 billion industry. Right? All of those elements, man, we see what's going on. Okay. Now, let's get back over here. I want to get to, uh, I might get to this PowerPoint real quick so I can kind of share with y'all what's uh you know i think i need audio too so here we go so in looking at this um powerpoint man well let's talk about it man what is witchcraft you know a lot of times man, our people may not even understand may not even know you know what are we what, what are we talking about what are we been delving into right so it says witchcraft witchcraft also called witchery or spellcraft, broadly means the practice of and belief in magical skills and abilities that are able to be exercised individually by designated social groups or by persons with the necessary esoteric secret knowledge. See, that's what it's dealing with, secret knowledge, man. When you're going back all the way back in the Genesis chapter 3, when, the, when uh, the serpent and Satan, you know, the spirit of Satan uh, came and seduced Eve, told her, well, how come you, you know, paraphrase, man, how come you're not eating another tree and I was a good and evil? And she said, man, the Lord told us don't, don't eat of that or otherwise we're going to die. He said, well, what? Surely you're not going to die. Once you partake of this tree and knowledge of good and evil, you're going to be, become as gods. See, that was the element where Satan said that there's a secret knowledge that God is withholding from you. And as soon as you partake in it, you're going to be as a God. Remember, that's exactly what George Soros was talking about. He said that. He had a disease on him, man, that made, made him feel like he was a god. And now he feels more comfortable now that he's living it out. See, that lets you know that he's motivated and driven by Satan. This is the same elements that uh, Satan utilized to seduce Eve. Oh, esoteric and secret knowledge, man. It, it, only certain and chosen people can receive it. That's where you get in the, these elements of witchcraft, man. And a person needs to believe in these things. They got to have magical skills and abilities, right? Let's continue. What about occultism? Just like we've seen in that other article, man. So people are turning to the occult now. The occult is from the Latin word occultus or clandestine. Hidden or secret is a knowledge of the hidden. These are all elements that are dealing with secret or hidden knowledge, man. You know, somebody tells you, man, I'm going to tell you something, but shh, don't tell nobody. See, Deuteronomy 13 gave us a complete law in regards to not abiding by that. It said if somebody uh, secretly entices you to worship, other gods, man, you're supposed to be the first one to lay hands on them. Matter of fact, let, let's get that that um let's get that real quick. Let's get that real quick. Uh so I get my um let's get that real quick and do the run. Any elements of secrecy, man. Most I was like, no, we're not doing that. Look at this. Deuteronomy 13, 6, it says, If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is thy as thy own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth, Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shalt thou eye thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou eye spare, him, neither shalt thou conceal him, but thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. So the children of Israel, we were not supposed to be dealing with any elements of the occult, man. Any secret, this esoteric, that, you know, hidden knowledge, this. Hey, you know, that's why even in the scriptures, man, when the um the uh the apostles man were talking about those that were coming in privately bringing in damnable heresies remember that 
These are the elements, man, that were destroying whole churches. Reading that real quick in uh, 2 Peter 2 and 1. It says, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately. See, that's when you start getting, man, Jake's get to talking about all oh, this, this secret, deep, that this, you know, I got the hidden mysteries in there. Some stuff is valid. Some things isn't. As long as they're scripturally proven and sound. OK, cool. But then when you start talking about other things outside of the Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I know that's part of the Bible, but you got to read this in order to get this understanding. You know, this is an accompaniment with the no, no, no. The suit of picker for books and all the other stuff, man. The Lord said, man, we're not dealing with any of those things. That's why they do it privately. <clears throat> you know, you got a few brothers on the sideline, man. They 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 doing some other stuff, man. You ain't ever seen before. Hey, man, when your brother stop eating meat? When your brother stop doing that? What? Not saying that that's witchcraft. Not eating meat. I'm just saying. Brothers start doing different things that they wasn't doing before, and there's only a couple of them. Then they see, you know, a third one joining, a fourth one joining. And they see, you know, man, they start, you know, stop wearing their fringes. Who knows what's going on? You know, these are just examples I'm talking about. Then, you know, there's some private little councils going on, secret things happening. And they see, you know, a whole new doctrine is, is being arisen and all kind of madness is happening. Folly, uh, folly ensues and all kind of problems erupt, right? But it says there's going to be false prophets among you, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. See, these are the elements that, that end up coming into play when one delves into, oh, elements of the occult, occultism, right? Isn't that what we just got to read? Let's get back over to it. So you see the occult. Hidden or secret, right? Uh, let's continue. Now you've got different forms of witchcraft out there, man. you got elements of the paranormal. You see, uh, you know, Esau, man, has already made all kind of uh, multi-millions of dollars, man, with shows, you know, showing all these paranormal activity TV shows, man, and ghosts in the house and all this other stuff, man. He's uh, made multiple multi-millions of dollars and billions of dollars on the whole industry and in the, in the um, movie industry oh we're watching the, um uh, what's the name of the movies i mean y'all know about them all the damn haunted house movies all the damn um uh uh, uh, uh poltergeist and uh, you know all of these things right elements of the paranormal voodoo santeria these are all, you know, Kandublay. These are these are all things that our people is, in particular involved in. Voodoo, Santeria, necromancy, shamanism. You know, you even got the elements of the the um, the Native American shamans, man, and them doing idolatrous practices and pagan practices, worshiping and calling on other gods, right? Uh, superstitions. You know, even when our people, man, are out here making these particular resolutions every year. You know, those are elements of witchcraft, man. You be out here and be, you know, don't, don't, um, don't, don't walk underneath of a, of a ladder, man. Don't, don't cross a black cat. You get seven years of bad luck, you break a, break a mirror. No, th those are all elements of witchcraft, man. They have nothing to do with the Lord and nothing, no cursings that the most High said. The most High didn't say, man, you break a mirror, man, thou shalt be cursed seven years. That ain't in the scriptures. But you see, our people end up getting caught up in these things. You know, got a lucky rabbit's foot, man. You know, even even in, in the, the fake, whether well, the GMO Jews, man, they they got in the, in the Kabbalah, man, wearing red red strings around. You got to tie a red string around your wrist. And, and uh, the Mormons, man, got magic underwear. I mean, all kind of foolishness, man, going on out there. See. You got magic, they spell it differently, M-A-G-I-C-K also. You got psychic mediums, there's all different forms and plethoras of elements of witchcraft that's out there. Uh, you got different forms of the occult, illuminationism, uh, different forms, of, which are different forms of philosophies, man. So even when you're looking at um, 
Deuteronomy 14 is talking about Lucifer. You're talking about elements of the occult, man, and the so-called white man who deals in Luciferianism, which is the um, uh, light bearers, you know, where they believe that they are the ones with the light, but they draw their light from Satan. They draw their light from the elements of the occult. Demon worship, divinations into, you know, different um, pagan customs and whatnot. You got new age, human divinity. You, you, you've got plenty of that going on right now. Humanism, man, everybody's believing into, you, you know, you are a God, you know, you self-manifest things and all this other stuff. Transcendental meta, uh, Transcendentalism, which is dealing with meditation and different chants. Transcendental meditation, you look into those things. Yoga. That deals with different elements of med uh, meditation, chants, Buddhism, Hindu, Hindu uh, roots. You know, even when you're dealing with the uh, the different uh, aspects of uh, you know the uh, Kundalini energy, you, you hear about those things. Your third eye, you know, a lot of those things, man, is all based upon elements of the occult, witchcraft, and, and so quote, quote unquote secret esoteric knowledge you know people say well I'm, I'm only doing yoga for stretching out know the roots of where it came from man. know that this is why they have you know hot yoga classes this is why they do you know they deal with different elements of even um uh well you know depending on where and how you're uh you know um looking at it from east india you know they have a. Uh, what they have is uh what's the name of that stuff? Um, oh man, I forgot the name of it. But they deal with like sexual energies and stuff like that, man. Uh it's right on the tip of my tongue. I can't even I can't even think of it. But there was one, there was one dude, man, that got uh got arrested, man. Uh, he was a yoga leader, man. He was out there raping the women and uh seducing them. Um uh, Dang, it was right down the top of my tongue. Let me think about it. Let me give me one second. It's gonna come to me. Uh, let me see if I can find it. You know, because I know sometimes our people get get uh some sometimes our people get get caught up, you know, and don't realize it. I know a lot of our people are involved doing yoga because you enter your fitness and all that other stuff, man. But you gotta know, man. There's a there's a, a heavy element. There's a heavy element of uh, wickedness that goes on with that. Uh, let me see something real quick. Let me share my screen because there's a uh, little article I want to share with you real quick. Serious guy. Sexual abuse by yoga gurus is an exploitation. Kama Sutra. There you go. It just came to me, man. East Indians, man, doing element, you know, Kama Sutra, man, which is all kind of different sexual magic and sexual uh, uh, attractions and positions and all kind of stuff, man. All that bleeds into this stuff. See, sexual abuse by yoga gurus is the exploitation of the position of trust occupied by a master of any branch of yoga for personal sexual pleasure. Allegations of such abuse have been made against modern yoga gurus such as Bikram uh, Chaudhary, Kastub Dishkar, Yoga, Yogi Bhajan, Amrit, I mean, the list goes on. I can't even go pronouncing all these guys' names. But this is, this is what's going on, man. They're utilizing yoga, man, as a uh, means of sexual divination, man, and seduction. And that's where they, you know, our people get caught up on. They thinking, oh, it's just about exercise, man. It's just about stretching and helping me out. No, the real elements behind it, man, is, is something completely more devious. Okay. So don't forget about that. Let's continue on. So uh, we see here, we so we got yoga, meditation. That's why they got particular chants, man, that come along with it. Uh, your your meditations that they, they go through ain't got nothing to do with the most high. Right. Uh, continuing on, you got mysticism, secret spirituality, and all that. You know, you see a lot of that going on on the internet, man. TikTok, so far and so on, man. Everybody's a spiritual guru, man, helping you reach your reach your higher self, and 
you know, your third eye is opening up, man. And, and somebody knows how to decalcify your, your pineal gland. And, you know, before you know it, you got to release your con con uh, kundalini energy, man. You got to be anally probed. Yeah, this is all stuff, man, that's going on, man. Dating all the way back into Egypt. These particular practices, you know, Kabbalists, numerology, mysticism, esoteric and spiritual knowledge, metaphysics, astrology is dealing with the Zodiac. Rosicrucianism is a uh, Catholic church, esoterics. I mean, these are all terms, man, you can further look into, you know, but these are all elements of the occult. Remember, the occult is those that are dealing with secret or hidden knowledge, man. These are, these are, all, these are all ways, man, people are saying, we know more than what you've been told. Come, come listen to us. Come follow this, right? These are all elements, man, that's been practiced by Egypt, Babylon, Assyria, Edom, Elam, man. All the nations, man, are developed and put themselves in, in these particular positions of uh, power, right? So even when you're looking at, uh, you know, Jeremiah 10 and 2, where the most I said not to learn in the ways of the heathen, we were given that as a, as a means of understanding off the rip. That we weren't supposed to be following and going after the ways that these heathens uh, present to us, right? So we don't we don't deal in them things. Um, you also have, uh, you know, Proverbs twelve. I'm gonna just quote. I'm gonna quote these scriptures, man. Y'all can write them down. Uh, Proverbs twelve said, "The wicked, I mean, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces them." See, this is why the Most High didn't want us involving ourselves in this. Even in Psalms 106, 35, the most I told us, man, that our people learned the ways of the heathen, man, and started sacrificing our kids to, you know, false gods and idols, man. We got jacked up. And then for anybody who said, man, that, none of that stuff exists. That, uh, that ain't real. I mean, just go back into th this one we'll have to go to. Some say, man, no, no, that's witchcraft, man. I don't believe in that stuff, man. That's all phony. Well, we got to look at it from a perspective of the scriptures. What happened when um uh, what happened in Exodus? What happened in Exodus? Uh let's look at this. Exodus 7 and 8. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. So here's a miracle from the Most High. Most High told Aaron, man, throw the rod down, it's going to become a serpent, right? He did it, performed it. The power of the Most High was shown. Now look at this, verse 11. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their enchantments. For when they cast down every man his rod, they became serpents, but Aaron's rod swallowed up their rod. So it's showing you the dominance and the power that the Most High has, but it shows you that, hey, these damn um, magicians utilizing their enchantments, the so-called wise men of Egypt and sorcerers were able to duplicate the same type of miracles that the Most High performed. See, that's why you can't, we can't be deceived into thinking that everything is, is all good or everything is from the Most High. Remember, the scriptures even say that Satan can be transformed into an angel of light. You know, so when you're seeing these guys like Chris Angel and uh, uh, David Blaine and David Copperfield and all of these other, you know, new age magicians and all that, these guys are conjuring those spirits and demons, man, empowering themselves with what they would say, oh, these are just illusions. Or oh, it's just a sleight of hand. No, no, some of these things, man, these guys are actually performing are inspired by Satan, inspired by demons and, and sorceries. Right. That they're out here performing and doing it in front of crowds and, you know, telling you pick a card and throwing, throwing the whole deck against a window and the one card sticks to the window. And, you know, all this type of stuff, man. Showing that they're able to duplicate some of the powers of the most high. But ultimately, we see that the power of the Lord reigns above all. Reigns above all, man, even the uh, the elements of witchcraft and uh of the occult that they do so it's been practiced throughout all these other cultures in history right so let's continue on and this is where we see that you know america gets its influences from all of these particular countries well, let's look at this so you got a uh, different 
symbolisms that are being used. You know, some of your little favorite rappers are running around with upside down crosses tattooed on them and all of that. They don't realize, man, that they're involving themselves in, or some of them do. You know, it all depends on what they're into. All these particular elements of the occult, hidden symbolisms, man. You know, you got the 666, you got the hexagram, you got all, you know, some may say, oh, don't talk about that. Listen, historically, it's been used for evil. We got to keep it real. Triangle of the pyramid and the eve, the, the eye, you know, the swastika, the anarchy symbol, man. You see the horned hand. You see many of many a politician, many a um, men of influence throwing up this this horned hand, right? This is a, it tells you here. It says the horned hand is the sign of recognition between uh, those who are in the occult. It may also recently be used. As those who are identified with heavy metal music is beyond that, man. They're exemplifying the horns of Satan, the unification of the cult of Baphomet. You know, you see over here, up here, see the goat head. That's where the horns are coming from. The goat head, the horn God, goat of Mendes, Baphomet, God of witches, the scapegoat. It is Satan's way of mocking Christ as the lamb who died for the sins of humanity. So, you know, these are all different occults. You're looking at the Thunderbolts, man. This is what the white supremacists is using. Let you know that they're, they're all involved in these particular elements of witchcraft. Okay. Uh, so let's continue. Here we got evil, the evils of Israel, right? Even our own people, man. Remember, shamanism, voodoo, candomblé, uh, santeria, all of these things. You know that our people are, are caught up in. Let's look at a uh, look at another scripture. And um, let's look at a. Uh, I want to look at Sirach one. And let's look at a. Uh, Let's look at uh I think I want to look at uh patient. Let's start here at verse 20 uh 25. It says the parables of wisdom, the like the parables of knowledge are in the treasures of his wisdom, of wisdom, but godliness is an abomination to a sinner. See, when it comes down to doing righteousness, godliness, holiness, man. They'll consider that wickedness, man. To do righteousness, oh man, I don't want to do that. That becomes an abomination to one who desires a sin. To do good, a sinner's going to say, heck no, that's wicked to me. So imagine what the churches are talking about, man. Why Do the law. Nobody can keep the law. Why do the law? Christ did the law for us, so we ain't got to do it. I'm not with it. I'm going to continue sinning. I'm saved under grace. That's somebody who is godless, right? And they love the abomination. Verse 26, if thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments and the Lord shall give her unto thee. For the fear of the Lord is wisdom and instruction of faith and meekness are his delight. Distrust not the fear of the Lord when thou art poor and come not unto him with a double heart. Be not a hypocrite in the sight of men and take good heed what thou speakest. See, this is what happens. You know, many of our people, man, they out here believing and thinking that they're praying to the most high, that they're you know, conjuring up these particular spells and these uh, elements of witchcraft, seeking out the face of the most high, you know, dealing in voodoo, dealing in sanctity and all. They worship all these other gods, man, but they universally believe and know that there's a higher power. But they're out here doing these things all in wickedness, man. They said they're being hypocrites in the sight of men. Verse 30, exalt not thyself, lest thou fall and bring dishonor upon thy soul. And so the most high discovered thy secrets and cast thee down in the midst of the congregation because thou camest not in truth, no, because you want to deal with witchcraft, sorceries, other elements that you think is going to draw you closer to the most high, that's going to bring forth results that you desire based upon wickedness. It says, because thou camest not in truth to the fear of the Lord, but thy heart is full of deceit. See, that's what ends up happening, man, when our people get following after these particular elements of the occult and wickedness. Okay. So that's what the Most High does not want us doing. 
So let's look at some of the things that, you know, Israel is caught up in uh, when it comes down to these elements of witchcraft. OK, look at this. Now, the law and witchcraft, you know, uh, you've got um, Deuteronomy 22, 18 tells you that you're not supposed to suffer a witch to live. Um, you know, I, would, I, I think I quoted, uh, I did quote about Samuel. Um, let me make sure that's the one in Deuteronomy 22. I quoted it. But uh, I might not. Oh, no, no. I said Deuteronomy. Exodus, Shalakia. No wonder. Good thing. Good thing. I'll double back on that one. It's Exodus 22, 18. Matter of fact, matter of fact, let's, uh, matter of fact, I'm just going to read it for y'all. I'm not going to go there because I don't want to just keep, you know, uh, taking up time. But let's read it real quick. Exodus 22, 18. Um, Like your computer's frozen. Exodus 22 18. That reads, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Right? So we know even just the bare essences of witchcraft, we're not even supposed to be involving ourselves in. Witches aren't even supposed to be alive, you know. But here they are making billions of dollars here in America. They said it's no is no better time to be a witch than now. Deuteronomy 18 and 10 says, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or to use divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a witch oh verse 11 or a charmer or a consultant with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer see wizards warlocks man uh witches you know all of those things man was an abomination to the most high many of us know this but we got to make sure that we cover it um, and I quoted first Samuel that was in first Samuel 15. Um, you can start around, uh, well, actually I didn't quote it, but I talked about Saul's, uh, Saul's sin, but reading first Samuel 15 verse 23, it says for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He hath also rejected thee from being king. So this was Saul's judgment. But it says rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. So you even have to measure that. You know, sisters, when you're out there being rebellious against your husbands, you know, brothers, when you're out there being rebellious against uh, order and discipline and structure within your camps and congregations and whatnot. The most I said, man, he looks at that as witchcraft. That's just as bad. Any elements, man, that you go against or rebel against an order or understanding of structure set upon biblical principles, if you go against that, you can be found in rebellion. That's seditious against the Most High. Most High said he looks at that as witchcraft, and we just seen that a witch should be put to death. So that's why I said, are we practicing, are people practicing witchcraft unawares? Very well could be. That's why we got to check our spirits, check ourselves, examine ourselves, as it says in Second uh, Corinthians 13 and 5. Because just by being a, a, rebe a rebel and then secretly enticing you know, somebody else to join your cause, man. I don't like that, man. The brother talked to me this way. Oh, man, yeah, this, this ain't right, man. I don't like that. Instead of going and voicing your concerns to the proper, you know, channels of leadership and authority, man, you you rather stir up the pot, man, and, and inside a rebellion. Uh, you know, sisters, oh, your husband he got you doing that. I don't do that. Nah, 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 nah. And then you saying, what? You don't you don't do that, y'all? Well, I ain't doing that in my house. Either. Now you've got a whole re a re rebellion lined up. Look what happened in in, um, in Esther, the first chapter, when King Ahasuerus was was calling for his queen Vashti to come come forth, and she refused. And the the men and his counselors was like, "Look, we got to do something about this man because otherwise, all the women is going to start acting the damn fool, and our whole our household is going to be a mess. If she's rebelling against you, man, it's going to be a problem for all of us. So, King, you got to get rid of her." This is the type of things that we're talking about. You know, the scriptures say, man, for rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. See, when you get too stubborn, man, you're stuck in your ways. You don't want to change. You don't want to adapt. You don't want to 
uh, do things in, in righteous order. The most I said that can be looked at as iniquity and idolatry because why you're stuck on your way. You're stuck on you're stuck in in the rut to where, you know, uh, you don't want to change. You don't want to repent. You don't want to do things that are, are beneficial to, you know, your spirit. To others. You're refusing to change. Look, that most I said, that's iniquity and idolatry. So we got to be careful. Got to be careful. OK, now let's go on back. Um, here's some other scriptures that you can reference in regards to different elements of witchcraft, right? You can write those down. But I want to get into a little bit more uh, of these type of characters, man. Alistair Crowley. Look how he's dressed up, though. See how people love Egypt so much, man. But uh, look who else also loves loves Egypt. Now, this guy is the high priest of witchcraft, Satanism, and the occult. Alistair Crowley. He was born in 1875. He died in 1947. He was an uh, English occultist. Right? We're going to look at him in a minute. See his book, Book of Witchcraft, man? There's, there's a, a famous picture of Jay-Z wearing a shirt that had one of his commandments saying, doest thou wilt. That's a quote from his book of witchcraft and, 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 and wickedness. Let me let me see if I can find that picture of Jay Z wearing a "Do as Thou Wilt" shirt, man. The, the nerve of this dude! The nerve of it! One of his commandments of the occult, man. Now I'm assuming that that they that he had that on. Now this wasn't some sort of uh you know trickery. Let me let me find the picture. Hold on. Let me find the picture. Uh where is he at? Here we go. So you see here, do what thou will, right? And that's one of the satanic commandments. How do we know that? Choose guy right here. Do what thou wilt. The satanic mandate. Anton LaVey, we're going to look at him in a minute. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Alistair Crowley, the Satanist. Right? This comes from his, his elements. He's This guy made the satanic Bible. Jay-Z's wearing a shirt. Look at John Lennon. The whole Beatles idea was to do what you want. Do what thou wilt, as long as it doesn't hurt somebody. Um, you know, the new age form of it is YOLO. You only live once. Who was that um, promoted by and song created by? Drake and um, uh, what's the name? Lil Wayne did them songs, right? Drake has soared to astronomical levels of stardom. Biggest star in hip hop and all that other stuff, man. Once you make those particular declarations, man, you 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 um your star is gonna shine bright. Look what happened with Jay Z, man. As soon as he does that, he breaks his whole brotherhood. They they started off the whole black business, Rockaware and, and Rockefeller Records and all that was one of the biggest uh, music empires going on. And then what happened? Jay Z decides he's gonna go a whole nother direction. Cuts off Dame Dash. All the record label folds up, and now Jay Z's a billionaire, and you know, hitched a ride with, with Beyonce, the big power couple, billionaire power couple. Man, now Jay Z's on a whole nother level. What did he do to get to that point? Interesting question, interesting question, right? So, you know, you, you, can, you can figure that one out for yourself. What did he do? So let's look at this. Let's continue on. All right. So we see who his daddy was. Who 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 was he observing and who was he watching? So here he goes. Alistair Crowley. Alec born, born Edward Alexander Crowley. Born in October 12, 1875. He died December 1st, 1947. He was an English occultist, ceremonial, ceremonial magician, a poet, a painter, novelist, and a mountaineer. He founded the religion and philosophy of Thelema. Identifying himself as the prophet entrusted with guiding humanity into the eon of Horus, 
in the early 20th century. So this is all going back to um, Egypt, which we seen they involved themselves with magicians and sorcery. We just read that in Exodus 7, right? Look, the lemma roughly means will in Greek. The phrase true will does not appear in the book of the law, the central sacred text of the lemma. Nevertheless, Alistair Crowley, various commentaries on the book routinely postulate that each individual has a unique and in incommensurable true will that determines his or her prosper or so like a proper course in life. So if you think about it now, man, how many people are out there motivated and saying, I control what I do. Uh, I can do anything. You can do anything that you're, you set your mind to. Um, uh, only God can, you know, not even thinking in those terms, only God can judge me, man, but people are just out there completely living for themselves. That's about the divine human nature, the humanism aspect, right? Remove the most high, remove judgment, remove any fear of the Lord, remove any fear of a higher power and say that you physically do everything, manifest everything yourself, right? Various commentaries in the book routinely postulate that each individual has a unique and incommensurable true will that determines his or her proper course in life. This invention of Crowley's appears to be an attempt to explain how some actions may be wrong or, quote, false when there is no law beyond do what thou wilt. So you can only it can only be sin to you if it's like an offense to you. But otherwise, you can do what you want to do. If it doesn't bother you, you know, you see, that's how some people have that attitude now. When it comes down to the LGBTQ plus HIV lifestyle, hey, do what you want. That's a, that you, whatever you do in your bedroom is what you do, man. Leave me, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, you do what you want, man. I don't judge. Hey, do you see, you see that type of attitude, man, is drawn from this type of spirit. See that there is no law beyond do what thou wilt. See, notice it says this invention of Crowley's appears to be an attempt. To explain how some actions may be wrong or false when there is no law beyond do what thou wilt. So he said, some actions may appear to be wrong, but there's no law. You do what you want. Actions that conform to true will are thus considered to be correct, while willed actions that deviate from true will may nevertheless be wrong. In the book of the law, Crowley wrote, do what thou wilt. Right. Let's continue. How they obtain, quote unquote, knowledge. Crowley would eventually introduced not without protest the practice of homosexual sex magic into the OTO as one of the highest degrees of the order for he believed it to be the most powerful formula. Did you hear that? This is what I'm talking about when you talk about dealing with kundalini energy and uh, anally penetrating each other. No, th this is all forms of power, dominance, control. They think that they're receiving knowledge, power, understanding through these actions this is why in hollywood they have all these you know these uh these gay orgies remember just um this past dstm pope francis just forgave a priest for having gay orgies at at the um at, at the uh within the catholic church and one of the dudes man od'd on 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 viagra See, they're in there having sexual gay orgies, man, because what are they trying to do? They're trying to invoke spirits, man. They're trying to get to sexual magic and they're fulfilling all of their lusts. This all comes from satanic practices, man. So Crowley would eventually introduce, not without protest, the practice of homosexual sex magic into the OTO as one of the highest degrees of the order, for he believed it to be the most powerful formula. Jason Newcomb, uh, sexual magic. It was clear that Crowley felt that the accusations against the original Templars of practicing sodomy and orgies with women had been based in fact, but not understood by their detractors. So, you know, these are the type of things that he was involved in with his occult following. They was involving themselves in all of these different um, uh, sexual orgies, uh, uh, all these deviant, you know, all these deviant, um, uh, deviate practices, you know, and it's all founded on different elements of, of homosexuality. They think that there's power in that, man. That's what they were, that's what they are there doing. And when you're talking about the OTO, it's called the Ordo Templi Orientis, and it's a, uh, an occult 
secret society dealing in magic and all that other stuff man so you know this is what when it, when it talked about you know dealing with the oto and all of that alistair crowley introduced the, the practice of homosexuality that's why i said we're not without protest because some people was like hold on man i don't I don't know. You know, you're saying that this is how we're going to get to higher forms of knowledge and, you know, getting this magic, man. But I'm not too comfortable with that. He's like, look, man, if you follow me, you're going to do this, man. Get involved. So this is what's going on behind these closed doors, man. You're dealing with the casting couches in Hollywood, in the music industry and all that other stuff, man. You know, guys voluntarily and opening themselves up. So they can be dominated by another man. This is where they're saying, oh, you're going to get inspiration, man. You're going to be a star. You're going to be brought to higher levels. Just bend over. See, this is what they're into. Right? Even this guy, L. Ron Hubbard, Scientology. He followed after Aleister Crowley. Him and his him and his buddy, uh, Jack Parsons. Jack Parsons. They got they got an um another, you know, the, from the OTO, the, the other way that they, they pronounce it is the Order of Oriental Templars. And this guy, L. Ron Hubbard, he was a student of Jack Parsons. Jack Parsons was a high, a high ranking uh, member of uh, Aleister Crowley's satanic occult. So when you're looking at the roots of Scientology, man, it goes all the way back to the order of Oriental Templars and Jack Parsons, who he learned from and Jack Parsons, who learned from Aleister Crowley who's involved in satanic worshiping and, and um, homosexual activity. And it was believed that L. Ron Hubbard got himself involved in them homosexual rituals as well. I mean, this guy was a science fiction writer, man. He was writing about damn alien wars and all kinds of foolishness, man. And then all of a sudden he comes up with this grandiose idea about creating a religion or a philosophy known as Scientology. And now he's got multi-millions of people Billions of dollars following after him. This guy's a straight crackpot, man. One day I'm going to do a, a lesson on Scientology. I did one years ago. But I'll probably have to double back on it again. But this guy's a straight nut. Rooted in satanic worship. And you got our people, man, following after Scientology uh, to this day. Not knowing where the roots come from. Anton... Savander Xander LeVay. Now, this is the high one, another high priest of Satanism. He founded the Church of Satan. Let's look at him real quick. Anton Savander LeVay, all rooted in America. America lets every all this go, right? As an American author, carnival and circus performer, musician and occultist, he was the founder of the Church of Satan and the religion of Satanism. He authored several books, including the Satanic Bible, the Satanic Rituals. The Satanic Witch, The Devil's Notebook, and Satan and Satan Speaks. He's in love with Satan, man. Remember, Satan said, all this, all the power I get to you if you bow down and worship me. LeVay was labeled many things by journalists, religious detractors, and Satanists alike, including the father of Satanism, the black pope, and the evilest man in the world. Imagine that. And guess what he found? was what was found in, uh, His uh, cult. San Francisco. Home of the sodomites, right? There they go. You got a guy like this, Jimmy Seville. This guy was a, a, a big time pedophile over there in um, in Britain. He was uh, 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 on uh, British TV, man. He's a personality, man, famous. He ended up getting busted, man. Uh, was one of the biggest p pedophiles, man, preying on children. He was involved in Satanism and the occult, man. I mean, just look at the face, man. You see the demons on him. Remember, George Soros said it's like a disease. I want to have this, this particular complex. This is what they're involving themselves in. This is why you see the pedophile rings. That, you know, they're preying on the children, man. They want to violate the bodies of the young. They want, remember, that's why the, the law even tells us, man, about giving our children over to Molech, man, and passing them through the fire, offering them up as sacrifice, man. Modern day sacrifice now is is, is the, the child trafficking and the, the pedophilia and everything else that goes on. See, let's look at his, historically some of these some of these other articles, man, that's been going on. Big political cover up in the 1980s, a pedophile ring in the UK Parliament. I mean, how many times have we covered 
all of the um, elements of, of pedoph pedophilia and DSTN. We just seen the, the uh, um, Spanish church, 200,000, 200,000 cases of child sex abuse. That's coming from the damn Catholic church. The Boy Scouts had to file bankruptcy because of all of the cases they had against them because of uh, uh, pedophilia and sexual abuse. This is what they pray on, man. This is what they pray on. I'm going to read one other scripture, 2 Second, Second Kings uh, 23 and uh, 7 through 10. Let's read that real quick. And uh, that reads... And this is dealing with dealing with the uh, the uh, the kings, right? And uh, this is what was going on in Judah. They was allowing sodomites in. So let's look at this. It says, and he break down the houses of the sodomites that were by the house of the Lord, where the women wove hangings for the groves. And he brought all the priests out of the cities of Judah and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense, from Geba to Beersheba and break down the high places of the gates that were the entering of the gate of Joshua, the governor of the city, which were on a man's left and at the gate of the city. Nevertheless, the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but they did eat of the unleavened bread among their brethren. So here we're seeing the cleaning up uh, of King Josiah having to get rid of all of this, the, the sodomite priests and whatnot, you know, that was going on within, um, within the, within the, uh, within the nation, man. So this is the problems that was going on within Israel, man. And now you see what they was up to. You got our own people, man, was involving themselves at dealing with, uh, different elements of wickedness, sodomy. And it carries on. Look at this. But, uh, most discussing the sex abuse and pedophilia in the Britain loop back to Jimmy Seville. The BBC star accused of necrophilia and abusing 500 children, and these do as well. See, this guy was funneling kids even into the higher ranks of the British Parliament. He was trafficking these kids too, man, 500 of them. Necrophilia. This guy. Y'all know what necrophilia is, right? If not, let's look at it real quick. Let me look this up. Hold on. Let's put, uh, just in case anybody needs a reminder. Uh, Look at this. Hold on. Just like it. You see this? Necrophilia. This is what this guy was into, man. 500 cases of child sex abuse, man. He's trafficking in these kids, even to the, uh, the, the higher ups in the British Parliament so that they can have their way with these kids. And it says he was a necrophiliac. What is that? An obsessive fascination with death and corpses. A, a paraphilia in which sexual gratification is derived from fantasies or acts involving a corpse. So this guy was out here, man, having sex with dead bodies. You understand what I'm saying? Doing all kinds of madness and wickedness. That's what he was up to. So-called white man. Jimmy Savile or Seville. And then you see, who, who's he involving himself with? Always oh, dealing with elements of the, of the British Parliament. See, Jimmy Savile, one year after Savile's 2010 death, horrifying allegations of abuse emerged that have, quote, shaken our country to the core. UK Health Secretary Jeremy Hunt said the allegations led to investigation upon investigation as British authorities tried to determine whether others like Savile manipulated their celebrity to intimidate the victims into silence. Let's continue. Look, British, Parliament, British Prime Minister. And an obscene act with a dead pig's head, how David Cameron took part in a sword initiation ceremony after joining Oxford University Dining Society as a student. See, this is the type of things that they're doing. Skull and bones. You know, you've heard George Bush admit to being part of skull and bones. 
Uh, there's a movie called The Good Shepherd. And you see them, man, they out there bathing in, uh, you know, wrestling in, in feces, getting pissed on, you know, involving themselves in all kinds of sexual deviancy, all to be part of this secret society known as Skull and Bones. And you go to these Ivy League schools like Yale and Harvard and all that, and they all corral themselves in uh, these effort, you know, these um, essences of the occult. And they're doing it from the U.S. all the way to the U.K. So British Prime Minister David Cameron, he was taking part in uh, initiation ceremonies of the occult and wickedness, right? This is what they're doing at high levels. When, when you hear them talking about, you know, again, going back to uh, Isaiah 14 and the Luciferian aspect of worship, this is what they're doing. This is the light that they're worshiping. This is what they're finding themselves involved in elements of the occult, esoteric, heathenistic, paganistic customs, man, sexual deviancy, that's what they're into. And they all are drawing power from it, which they get from Satan. Let's continue. Fair use, fair use, all right? Utilizing this for commentary, for teaching, all right? So let's look at this, man. This, this, this guy is from an old uh, 80s band called the Scorpions. Let's listen to his testimony. Come on, what's going on now? Why isn't it playing? Why isn't this not playing? I'll show you the video clip of him admitting it out of his own mouth okay, in just a second. The former bassist from the Scorpions, Ralph Reicherman, has admitted that he oh, once sorry. attended a snuff party where someone or multiple people were murdered for the entertainment of the gap. Let's read it. Let me play it one time. I'll show you the video clip of him admitting it out of his own mouth in just a second. The former bassist from the Scorpions, Ralph Reicherman, has admitted that he once attended a snuff party where someone or multiple people were murdered for the entertainment of the guests who paid up to $100,000 to attend. Reicherman, originally from Germany, bumped into a paparazzi from TMZ who asked him about Berlin's popular fetish parties, and this was his stunning response. I went to one one time, I've seen some really bad Was it like a donkey show? Or? No, actually, you know, I think they, it's, they actually kill people there. So they pay like up to like 100,000 people to see people get executed. I'm not, I'm not Says he's not kidding. You can see the look on his face looks pretty freaked out, which brings to mind the allegations made by former Senator John DeCamp in his book, The Franklin Cover-Up, about supposed snuff films and child abuse that is alleged to have occurred inside the Bohemian Grove by Illuminati members and Aleister Crowley fans and black satanic sex magic practitioners back in the 1980s, around the same time when the Scorpions were in their heyday. They were very popular. Songs like Wind of Change, Rock You Like a Hurricane, and Still Loving You. But one of their album covers, Virgin Killer, features child pornography, which was sanctioned and approved by RCA Records. So it shouldn't be that surprising that such sick individuals who would put such things on their album cover would be rubbing elbows with such sick, satanic people that they would be throwing parties where people would get murdered for the entertainment of the guests. Ralph Reicherman also hinted that there was even something worse that happened at the parties when he said this. Another one, but literally I saw like was he talking about possible child abuse as outlined in the Franklin cover-up? Such allegations don't seem that far-fetched when you understand the sick, satanic, black magic practicing scum within the Illuminati and his stunning admission really should be investigated by the FBI absolutely horrific so I'm gonna I'm stop it there i don't want to continue on with this but you see what's going on you see what they're doing behind closed doors man doing 
human sacrifices, man, child abuse, satanic practices going on at high level up parties, uh, get togethers, seances, divination parties. You know, these are the type of things where, you know, these Jakes that are out here trying to chase their dreams of being the next big, big star, big rapper, whatever, uh, big movie star, um, are all being subject to being involved in. And then, you know, people ask him, man, hey, do you, you know, there's, there's only been a few that actually come out and say, yes, I've seen these parties. I've been to those parties, man. It was wild, wicked as hell. I had to get out of there. I had to separate myself. Um, and then there's others who will get out there and they'll say, oh, I've never seen it. I don't know nothing about it, but these are the ones who's out there striving and, and making all this damn money. These are the ones who's out there being the influential faces out there. Why do you think that there's only certain faces, man, and you see recycled faces on these on these movies and TV shows all the time? I mean, there's millions of people out there wanting to be actors and actresses, man, but there's a small circle that they constantly stay in. You notice that they all are dating the same people. I mean, how many how many people in the same industry has J-Lo been in? And they say, oh, well, you can only you got you got to deal with people who understand the lifestyle and understand your industry and all this other stuff. Really? What do they have to understand? That's the bigger question. Where and how and what do these people are involved in themselves and have subjected themselves to and humiliated themselves to? You know, there's a reason why these Jakes are running around in the darkest of clubs with shades on. Why are you wearing shades on and you in a dark club and you are out at night? You know, because they're trying to hide, man, the guilt in their soul and their spirit and their eyes, man. That's why they keep rotating around the same... The same guy, you know, which is so interesting. And here's a, here's an example. For those who watch the Marvel movies, the same guy that plays Captain America, he was the first one to play the Human Torch in the Fantastic Four. Now, if you're involved in the Marvel universe, you know I'm gonna geek out on y'all for a hot second. <laughs> Fantastic Four. And the Avengers is all in the Marvel Universe, right? They're all part of the same coalition. So how the hell can you have the same guy playing the Human Torch? All of a sudden, now he's Captain America. I mean, we're talking about in the same world, same thing. But they just utilize the same damn people because they've already subjected themselves to what Hollywood has to offer. See, millions of people waiting in line to be the next star. But they said, no, no, we're just going to keep rotating these same people in the secret of cult. That's how things work. All right. Let's look at one more video. It's 60 Minutes, man. Bob Dylan. Listen to what he got to say. You're still out here doing these songs. You know, you're still on tour. I do, but I don't take it for granted. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. You know, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago. And I'm holding up my hand. Now, notice he said his destiny, he made a bargain with it, and he couldn't say, he didn't say the name. But he said, I'm living out my end of the bargain. Let's continue. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Should, should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. The chief commander. Remember what George Soros said, man? He says he felt like he was anointed by God and all this other stuff. Who's the chief commander? Satan. Who's the chief commander? The same one who said, bow down and worship me. All these kingdoms will be yours. See? This earth. <laughs> and in this earth and in, uh, and in a world we can't see. Bob Dylan has been nominated. to so Bob out here doing it. Bob Dylan, he said, you're still out here, man. At your age, you're still out there performing, man. He sacrificed his whole entire life. Why do you think you still see the Rolling Stones still performing out there in their a in a 70s? I mean, do they really need to be out there still performing? Mick Jagger and them cats, man, got hundreds of millions of dollars, man. They should be set for life. Retirement should be in effect. But they have to toil all the way until their, their dying day because they sold their souls. You understand what I'm saying? That's what that mean. The scriptures tell us that, man. What profit a man if he gain the world but lose his soul? Right? That's what Bob Dylan essentially was saying. He had to sell his soul to the Satan. So let's continue. If people don't think that's real, man. They, they coming out. This is out their mouth. They go into these parties, man, where all kind of damn everything from uh you know, human sacrifices happening, child pedophilia is going on. 
occultic worship and in, 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 uh, secret deals with Satan for fame? I mean, it's all real. Look, all your dreams are witnessing an exorcism live on TV. It's about to come true. This is a 2015 article. That's why I said we're just going to go down historically looking at some of the uh, particular elements of the occult going on and how America promotes all these things. Exorcisms live on TV now. Profiteering off of witchcraft. See, this is a time.com article. The network says it will be the first live televised event of its kind in the U.S. history. It's been more than 40 years since the double Oscar winner, The Exorcist, arrived in theaters in 1973. But the abundance of exorcism themes filmed in the ensuing years have made it apparent that moviegoers' fascination with the phenomenon hasn't waned. Now, this is a 2015 article, right? But notice in today's time, they just have a new exorcist movie out right now right now see this is a, this is what's going on and you know what's so funny about it is they're utilizing the catholic church to dispel and get out these particular um spirits but what did, what did christ say man is, is, can satan cast out satan <laughs> i mean come on that's mark 3 23 uh, 24 but they're profiteering off of it, man. They're utilizing these elements of witchcraft, right? Uh, the brand new Exorcist movies out right now, and they're still doing it. Profiteering from 1973, man. People's fascination with it. We talked about this California psychics. Leviticus 1931 tells us about, you know, not consulting one familiar spirits or whatnot, man. We've seen that, right? You know, here, here you see the, the the Will Smith and his children. You see Jada Pinkett and them running around here right now. She's readily admitted that, you know, the whole family does psychedelics and drugs. I mean, their whole family's all jacked up, man. It's been, quote, unquote, alleged and rumored that they're involved with Scientology, even though that they denied it. But they're involved in it. And you see the, the, the daughter, man, back in the day, she's out here. Uh... Uh, showing her all seeing eye, the eye of Horus, all going back to elements of Egypt and magic in the occult. You see the symbolism all the time with, with Hollywood stars doing that, covering up one eye, showing the other. You know, even when you look at the back of the dollar bill, we know about that. But there's an old saying in the land of the blind, the one eyed man is king. That's where you see how the so called white man is establishing his kingdom and his rulership. That's symbology. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. So when you see it on the back of the dollar bill, he's establishing his rulership and his dominion. Why? Because everybody else is blind to everything that he's doing. Look at his son running around wearing skirts and all of that when he was in school. Uh, we'll skip that. Look at this. I was just talking about that, that particular article. The Satanic Temple unveils a go-headed statue in Detroit. You know, there's, there's um, Baphomet statues in Detroit. I think they've uh, erected a few more throughout the country. I mean, they've got after school programs, Satan Club and all this other stuff, man, that's going on in the earth right now. I mean, it's all kind of madness that's happening where we're seeing this place completely engulfed in Satanism and the occult and witchcraft. All right. Witchcraft and medicine. Galatians 5, 20, uh, 19 and 20 reads. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. Hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies. In the Greek, witchcraft is pharmakia, which means magic, sorcery, or witchcraft. Even if you look at the element of pharmakia, that's where you get the word pharmacy from. With many of these uh, experimental medicines that's going on, you see what they did with the mRNA uh, technology that they used to so-called stop the spread from that thing that was going on. You know what I'm talking about. You know, these are all elements that they're bubbling up. I just read an article last DSTM about China just found eight new viruses that they're getting ready to experiment on. You know, these are elements of witchcraft where they're getting ready to start conjuring up different mixtures, works of the apothecary, trying to develop a new a new virus, right? Pharmacia, medicine, medication. That is where, you know, you see all of these experimental drug uh, commercials going on all the time and you notice they you know every time you're talking about side effects they want to ramble that off and, and speak real fast when it comes down to what could happen to you 
but they show you all everybody's living a great life and now that i'm on my medication i'm on this it's, everything's fine everything's great you know we got to be careful of these things that's why when you know they they telling you man you got you got it you got a high blood pressure oh you got to be on these pills for the rest of your life they don't tell you oh just change your diet you know uh start taking these particular herbs man start regulating your your um your uh your physical activity they want you to worship it and be you know um relying upon particular drugs man because they're in there cooking them up in these laboratories of sorcery and witchcraft man you know we know sometimes people have to utilize certain things i'm not saying that because you're on medication you're involved in witchcraft what i'm saying is that they're the makers of these things they are and their objective is for you to worship and honor them and to rely solely upon them when the scriptures tell us man we re we resort to the most high for our healing man you know Sirach 38 if you read that it tells us how to gain healing from the lord and utilizing of you know homeopathic methods and herbs and whatnot so there's all different types of methods that we use man we just don't want to become completely relying upon what the so-called white man says all right and uh Y'all can uh, also read Wisdom of Solomon 12, like 1 through 6. It gives you more understanding about that as well. All right. The rod of Esolipius. This is the medicine symbol. This also comes from the Roman Greek God of healing. This is also based in idolatry. You know, they kind of backtrack on that and say, oh, no, we, we, we used the wrong symbol. Uh, we, we didn't mean that. Then they know what they're doing. Man. We know, they know what they're doing. So even... Elements of medicine, this all goes back to certain uh, things of idolatry. Look at this. Studies show 70% of Americans are on prescription drugs. This is how they rely, I mean, create a reliability on these drugs, man, the pharmacia, the elements of witchcraft. See? That's part of the article. Uh, it's your drinking water on drugs. I mean, I don't know how many times I've talked about it at nauseum regarding how the water supply has been tampered with and jacked up. Um, here's part of the article it says previous investigations like one conducted it by the associated press in 2008 have turned up similarly unsatisfactory results the ap's extensive investigation found drugs and drinking water supplies of 24 major metropolitan areas in the u.s everything from antibiotics to mood stabilizers to sex hormones so you know if you're wondering why people are acting the way that they're acting you know much of it has to do with what's going on in the food and the water supplies antibiotics mood stabilizers all the way down to sexual hormones man infertility drugs is in the water supply i mean it's all jacked up man. but if you're wondering why well hey if america is modern day egypt and they're going to go fall fall into the same category of um ancient egypt of old well wasn't the water supply jacked up with, with blood well america's experiencing the same things so we got to be careful out there all right but it's all coming from elements of witchcraft, man. Satan uh, moving through the spirit of the so-called white man. This is the things that he's involving themselves in. All for control of the people, man. Damaging their physiology. You know, all of that. Child witchcraft claims increasing as hidden crime is investigated. See, involving the children. Witches offended as Florida triple slang is linked to witchcraft. They, they're talking about a, a, a triple slaying that happened. And it was linked to witchcraft and the wit witches are offended that, uh, oh, we're being blamed for it. How dare you? Because the person that did it was involved in the ritualistic killing. Huh? Well, they're talking about that's offensive. Get the hell out of here. Pennsylvania Craigslist killer says a slayed dozens, uh, that she slayed dozens more across the U.S. as part of a satanic cult. I mean, these are all just historic articles, man, that I dug up. Just showing you how Satanism, the occult, is leading to pedophilia, homosexuality, murder, human sacrifice, uh, ritualistic killings, med uh, medicinal, uh, godlike worship, you know, all of this stuff is all elements of witchcraft and the occult. Gumman blames the devil for the killing spree. I mean, the, 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 the list goes on and on when we're talking about all of these things. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what happened here. Hold on. Why did it stop at that? Uh... Yeah. 
Yeah, Satan is moving, boy. He does not want this thing to go. I didn't even realize, man, that the audio clip from that article have froze up. So y'all might even miss part of the other elements that I was playing. Ain't that something? Let me see. I'll show you the video clip of him admitting it out of... Out of his own mouth in just a second, the former bassist from the Scorpions, Ralph Reicherman, has admitted that he once attended a snuff party where someone or multiple people were murdered for the entertainment of the guests who paid up to $100,000 to attend. Reicherman, originally from Germany, bumped into a paparazzi from TMZ who asked him about Berlin's popular fetish parties. And this was his stunning response. Yeah, I went to one one time. I've seen really bad. Was it like a donkey show or? No, actually, you know, I think they, it's, they actually kill people there and stuff. They pay like up to like a hundred thousand people to see people get executed. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Says. Now, see, I don't think y'all seen that man because it, I just seen on the, the stream yard thing said that the, the audio got jacked up. But if you hadn't, man, that that was a. Um, a guy from the 80s rock band, the Scorpions, he was talking about going into uh, these occult parties. He witnessed the snuff uh, action take place, which was a, a ritualistic killing that happened at the party. He said people are paying $100,000 to go see this stuff. This was going on in the, the dark elements of Hollywood. Um, I played also this video. Hopefully, I was able to see it. If not, I'm going to play it one more time. Bob Dylan talking about uh, his deal with the devil. still out here doing these songs you know you're still on tour i do but i don't take it for granted why do you still do it why are you still out here well it goes back to the destiny thing you know, i made a bargain with it you know a long time ago and i'm holding up my hand what was your bargain to get where uh, i am now should, should i ask who you made the bargain with <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander on this earth, <laughs> and on this earth, and then, uh, and then in the world. See, and so when I was making commentary about what he was saying, I don't think y'all was able to see the video, so I'm, I'm double backing on it. But this is what he's talking about. He made his deal with the chief commander. He's talking about Satan. Remember when Satan told? What we read that earlier in Luke four, where Satan said, "Man, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all the powers of the earth." So he's acknowledging he bowed down and worshiped to Satan to give him what power, authority, to give him this star and this, this fame. And what's he got to do? He's got to labor and toil for the rest of his no, nat natural life. He sold his soul for fame, right? That's why I made mention about like the Rolling Stones, man. These guys are in their 70s, man, still out here touring. They got hundreds of millions of dollars, man. They don't need to do that. It ain't because they love the music. No, it's because they have to. They have to, right? But we can't see. See, these are some of the other articles I was sharing. Uh, they did an exorcism on, on live TV back in 2015. You know, I made reference to how can Satan cast out Satan in Mark 3. But because of people's fascinations, you know, as it was saying here in the article, people's fascinations with the exorcisms and the movie Exorcism 1973, this is all relevant because they got the new exorcist movie out right now. And people are still involved with looking for uh you know uh, uh these paranormal phenomenons man demon possessions and all this other stuff when this is all real i mean we see these these particular spirits man rising up on people uh you know uh uh elder al he, he gave the, the class on recognizing spirits a couple of weeks ago i mean dealing with spirits like legion and you know all of these other demons that was you know roaming around the earth this is all things that's happening. You remember the, the, the spirits, man, and the demons that jumped on the um, the vagabond Jews that were trying to run around piggybacking off of the uh, the, the fame of uh, Paul and, and Yahweh Shai. And the demon said, man, hey, who are you little vagabond Jews, man? Paul, I know. Yahweh Shai, I know. You? I don't know. 
and they stripped them down naked man and jacked them up right so we see in that the, those elements are real right so let me let me look at these real quick man because I, I know i missed it but i just want to double back on them uh so you know this is dealing with exorcism and people's fascination with them the california psychics the um will smith and their kids man the offsprings of scientology man they're they're out there you know completely lost and gone i think she's a she's a dyke now he's all confused you know jada pinkett said they all are on psychedelics but why because they all were rooted in scientology which is all goes back to satanism the baphomet statue was talking about right witchcraft and medicine this is one i talked about in galatians 5 2019 looking at the word witchcraft which means pharmacia getting back into the medicines and medications right we talked about that the rada asclepius asclepius this is the, the symbol of medicines the roman greek god of healing all still rooted in paganism utilizing a serpent for its uh, inspiration you know what that goes back to satan again this is why 70 percent of americans are on prescription drugs that's just prescriptions we ain't even talking about you know uh recreational drugs i mean that that number can go up another 25 percent you understand uh that was more about that article this is the article talking about the drinking water i've talked about that ad nauseum man dealing with that letting you know see down here it says 24 major metropolitan areas in the u.s Water is tampered with with antibiotics, mood stabilizers, sex hormones. I mean, they, they left out the infertility drugs. We ain't even talking about the chlorine, the lead, uh, the bromide, and all that other stuff that's in the water. I mean, just go ask the brothers and sisters up there in Flint, Michigan, what's happening with that, right? So the water supplies is all jacked up. Child witchcraft claims, you know, dealing with child sacrifice, trafficking so forth and so on why do you think all these kids are going missing man many of them are involved in child sacrifice and ritualistic killings let alone with sexual trafficking and pedophilia rings it's all happening it's all based upon satanic worship witchcraft and the occult witches are offended because of a triple slang was linked to them and their practices yeah the craigslist killer we talked about this one a woman claimed that she killed dozens more because she's part of a satanic cult Gunman blames the devil for his killing spree. I mean, this is why you see all of these elements of Satan and unrighteousness and wickedness going on. And America promotes it all. America promotes it all. Man. So, Salaki, so for the uh, the technical issues that was happening earlier. Um, but Lord willing, man, that this spirit was, uh, I mean, that this lesson, you know, helped enlighten the spirit a little bit, man. Helped give you some insights, some understanding and, and the pathway so you can you know, do your own due diligence to go back research and understand what's going on many of y'all know some of y'all don't you may have to go share this video with friends and family that's still involving themselves with different elements of the occult that may not even know or understand what they're involving themselves in you know that's getting ready to go and do trick-or-treating tomorrow before they go out there and go sacrifice their kids to you know the the demon of Samhain and all of that man make sure they go check this out so you know if all any if anything else man uh, always remember, man, you got to fear the most high. Keep the commandments. Contact information is below. Uh, the covenant 144 at Gmail is the email. Uh, we're on Instagram, not super active, but we do have Instagram if you want to reach out that way. Also, if you want to do your alms deeds, man, you want to donate to the uh, ministry, it's cash app dollar sign IQ a month. All right. So, with that, I give all praise, honor, glory to the most high. Why you have a side, man? Y'all have a blessed day. Shalom.